everybody. How's it going? This is Rob Turley, your host at Down the Rabbit Hole Podcast. I hope you all are doing great. I hope you all had a great week so far. So uh, I'm excited to say that I have somebody here with me who is really awesome in the case of social selling. He's the social sales guy, if you will. Uh, very excited to have him here. So I would like to introduce Ian. Ian, I will let you introduce yourself because you could always explain yourself better than I'd be able to explain you. So very excited to have you here. Rob, thanks and uh, appreciate the intro. And I'll, I'll probably explain it shorter as well because people tend to read the bio and I, I cut things out because I've heard it too many times. So I have the pleasure of having been in sales for many, many years and sales leadership and done inside sales, field sales, channel roles, direct. So I've got a good, a, a good base, I think, of what your listeners will have experienced. But we've all been on different journeys. So one of my... Um, uh, values is I get to talk to a lot of customers. I sit on the panels and boards and judging of a lot of awards. So I get to ha engage with a lot of people that you wouldn't only engage with in, in the path that I've taken in different industries. For example, I'm in the tech sector, particularly cloud, but I get to in those awards, for example, meet people who are in the food industry. So they're in sales in totally different dynamics where there's similarity, but there's also differences, right? So I get to hear a lot of different things, which hopefully gives me more value to things like this as more breadth of understanding of the reality of what we all face. Right. Absolutely. And with that experience of working in technology, as you were saying, everybody needs some sort of appeal based off of what they do and selling technology as you know, I'm in the technology space as well. The same technology could be used across for an accounting company or a payroll company or a restaurant industry or a manufacturer or even an airline where a lot of things do fall in the line. So how would you go to approach somebody that you would teach them how to kind of form into that type of salesperson that's needed for those specific types of areas, uh, depending on who you're speaking to? Well, I think the big thing I've, I've learned over the years is there's a generic baseline of skills. So I do a lot of recruitment for talent. You know, I'm, the key thing as a sales leader <clears throat> is having good sales talent. Now, I don't want to be doing every deal myself and, and you can profess, well, great, I'm great, but it doesn't scale. You can't be in every deal. You've got to have trusted hands. Um, so uh, the most important part of my role, I believe, is hiring the right talent that can then represent you well. And you can coach them and mentor them, but the core has got to be there. So I always look for the fundamental in, in salespeople of doing doing the baselines extremely well. I think too many too many people get it worried about whether they've sold to a particular vertical sector or th those details. Um, oh, am I a great negotiator and all this stuff, right? For me, it's, are you good at listening? Are you good at asking the right questions and continually questioning? You know, it, it, in effect, you want to hire a young child because they're the best questioners. I've got two, two, two youngsters and they're the best questioners because they, why, why? You, you can tell them something that you think it, it's just a fact, right? There you go. I've answered your question. Why? Why is it that? Why, and then why is that? And why is that? And why is that? So they're gleaning understanding, right? Because they're sucking up information, trying to understand the world they're in. Salespeople tend to lose that. That's one of the top things I look for. People who will ask why, even in the interview stage, who will challenge and ask for explanation of things that you didn't think needed explaining until they've asked the question. Then you realize... Well, that, that's a really the fact you just asked why is a really good question, because there's now five more things I can tell you that I didn't reveal because I was just summarizing everything. And I think that's the key for selling. It's not having particular vertical market expertise because you can get someone. Uh, uh, oh, I know. I really understand accountants you, you described. But if you're not good at the foundations. Are you really going to create the results? You can have good conversations with people, but are you going to drive the right results? Um, and I've seen some very young salespeople who don't have 20 years of experience outperforming those who've got 25 years of experience because they're applying the fundamentals. And lots of salespeople, I think, even if they started out in the right vein, the world has changed. And I'm sure we'll come on to that. And it's changed even more radically this year for all of us. The customer has changed. The buyer dynamic has changed. If you as a salespeople don't continually adapt and be agile, to the world that we're in, the way the buyer is buying, what they need to understand, the, the dynamics of that relationship between seller and buyer, then what you did 10 years ago 
doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful today. And I've seen too many salespeople who've been around too long who still do what they always did, thinking it will still drive exactly the same results in a different world. And I think what we've just gone through with the COVID change is going to put a different dynamic on this yet again. It's going to change that up, that the skills are going to need to evolve. Exactly. And the ability to adapt to change is probably one of the most powerful weapons a salesperson can have, or people at that, anybody who's developing business with others, because people change. Yeah, People have different experiences. People have different opinions. Being able to morph into wh who they need to talk to. I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day where they said, and they swear by it, bartenders are the best salespeople. Do you know why? The reason why is because bartenders are pretty much just therapists that are selling you something the entire time that you're talking to them. Developing that relationship. People go to bars, even if it's the worst bar in the world. It's disgusting. It's not clean. And the drinks are overpriced or you just, you know, kind of curiously underpriced. Where the reason people are coming back to that bar is because they developed a relationship with that bartender. They make them feel cared for. They build a relationship, a rapport. Rapport is the most important word. And when people are selling on social media or selling in a digital space, that whole part of rapport goes out the window. I have no idea why. What's the difference between a video call between me and you rather than me and you sitting face to face, except for the spatial awareness of someone in front of you? Outside of that, it is the exact same experience. And that's what people don't understand. They think they have to change the way they treat people or act around people to impress them or to make them feel a certain way just because they're, they're digital. And I'll chat. One other thing I'll, I'll, I'll test there, not necessarily challenge because you didn't say it, but is, is think people think that and understand that rapport is not relationship. Right. And I learned this a, 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 a while back uh, and when it's pointed out to you, you think actually I hadn't thought of it that way. And I, I, I would have said. You say I've got a great relationship with them, right? Sales people always say, oh, no, I've got a great relationship with Susan or Bob. Well, do you mean relationship or great rapport? Because relationship means you can ask them to do something for you as an example. Right. That is challenging and they'll do it. Rapport means you'll be friendly together and engaging. But you ask them, well, yeah, they're not telling you that, right? So the example I got given, which which made me see the difference, was you go up to a stranger on the street and you ask them the time. You're friendly to them. Hi, hey, morning. Well, excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I hope you don't mind. Um, you don't, have you got the time? They're going to give you the time, right? Because I've got a little, I, I was friendly, asked a bit of rapport. So you give me something in return, which is small. But if I if I stopped you, excuse, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I hope you don't mind this morning. I'm really struggling. I lost my wallet and I need to get, you wouldn't be able to give me five pounds to get home, would you? See the different reaction you get. 10 out of 10 will probably give you the time with some rapport. The rapport isn't enough to get you the five pound, right? That's a relationship. Now, if I knew you, Rob, and so if, Rob, thank God I bumped into you. Um, yeah, I've got a problem. I need five pound. You're going to go, Ian, no problem. No problem. Because we have a relationship. I can have ask a bigger ask. And the trust said that there's a difference between rapport and relationship. And I think people miss that rapport builds towards relationship. Right. Rapport is what they think of you. And then a relationship is what they do with you. It's the action behind the rapport. Yeah. That's it. If you have a negative rapport, then people will not build a relationship with you. It's as simple as that. Unless they have to, if they're forced into it. But then again, no one's forced to do anything. I mean, oh, my job made me do it. You can quit your job. You're not they're not forcing you. You can do whatever you want, whether you want to do that or not is one thing or another, but you know. And that's one of the things I learned, you know, you have to challenge the language in sales leadership for salespeople, not that they're misleading, it's just the phraseology of, uh, you know, yeah, I've got a great relationship. Well, is it a relationship or is it rapport? Uh, I had a great conversation with them as my other bugbear. I often hear, I, I, have you spoken to, to, to such and such uh, opportunity of yours? Yeah, 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 I had a great, I had a conversation, com yesterday we had a conversation uh, and I was changed. Oh, so you, you, you spoke to them? Well, no, no, no. I emailed them and they emailed me back. That's a communication, not a conversation, right? That's formulated. I've edited my bit. You got your bit. You looked at it. You interpreted it in the way you thought I meant it. And now you planned your response. That isn't a conversation where I say something, you say it, I stop and go, no, no, Robert, sorry, Rob. No, I didn't mean that. Didn't mean that because I can tell straight away you're misunderstanding uh, and we're bouncing off each other and challenging each other. 
that doesn't happen on one way communication. So that's a, I always challenge, you know, well, what, what did you really mean? Because we hear often hear what we want. To, oh, I had a conversation with them yesterday. So I think there's lots of little things like that, nuances in today's world that need to be challenged, particularly in the world we're in working remotely of, did you really have a conversation? Because too right. many people think are defaulting to electronic medium today because it's easy to do so. I sent 20 emails to customers yesterday. Well, you didn't have 20 conversations. You sent 20 communications. Very different. Yeah, it's, it, for example, my company, White Rabbit Intel, we say that when we send an email or something like that or LinkedIn, we sent them a message. I had a conversation means you had a phone call with them. Yeah. That is a fact because it, those things cannot be confused, especially for metrics too. Did you have a conversation or did you have a call or did you have a conversation would be video, a call would be on the phone and then a message would be on LinkedIn or through an email. To, yeah. They're very different things because, you know, when you're sending someone a message, if you're sending them an email, as you said, it's a communication, but it's direct. It's one way. There's no questions that are asked. There's no understanding that. And um, there was a, a sales psychology book that I read. I don't know how accurate the statistic is anymore. It may have changed because Statista and Gartner, they're always figuring everything out, right? And yeah. through Gong as well. But um, with emails, 47% of the time, emails are misinterpreted from what was actually said by the person because there is no context, there's no influx of voice, and there's no actual face-to-face -face communication. Yeah. Because how much of body, how much of is body language communication? Most of it. So I always tell people out there, when you're selling digitally, turn on your camera, even if they have yours off, because they will know your intentions, because people yeah. read people's body language. If you're selling without a camera, your success rate is going to plummet. Totally agree, and totally agree. And here's the extra bit. How many, how easy is it to get angry on email as opposed face to face like this? Right? The number of times I've had, oh my God. I almost just spit out my drink when he said that. <laughs> such and such <laughs> angry, right? Or because, so what I've witnessed is often people default to a communication, I call it the email, whatever when there's bad news to tell, right? I can't deliver it on time or it feels awkward it's I can hide behind this. That's the time you definitely want a communication because that's the time it, you've just made it easy for them. A, that you haven't taken the time. And B, easy for them to get angry. Keyboard anger is easy, right? We keyboard warriors, we've all heard it. Whereas the note, I've, I've seen that and people, oh, I can't, oh, they're, so they're gonna be, oh my gosh, they were gonna be so mad about it. Whatever it is, or across my career, different. And I've said, well, I'll, I'll get on a call with them. Because what's the worst you can do, right? I'm not going to walk away with a broken leg, a broken arm. I'll, I'll talk to them on the phone. I'll do it on this, or if need be, meet them. I'm not. I'm not going to come away with it, with my arm chopped off, right? So the worst is I might feel a bit bad, or someone's going to shout at me. Whatever. But nearly every time, they don't. They might not be happy, but the it's a the conversation diffuses that because they're dealing with a human being, and most people inherently are not rude, ignorant, arrogant. They're not going to treat you that way because you're a human. I'm talking to you now. But when it's on the computer, it's like when you're in a car. And I, you know, we all get this, right? If you get out of a car, you don't walk down the street and someone's there and, you, and, you, and you're in the way of someone and shout at them. As soon as you're in a car and the same thing happens, how many people get on the horn and get angry? Because it's not a human now. You, you, you've dehumanized the person at the other end. So whenever it's something that you want to avoid, proactively make an effort, stop yourself and talk to them, video chat them in this world we're in today, because it's the right thing to do. Face up I, to it. I could not agree more. It's, it's also when you do that, you now have given yourself the open opportunity to fix it. If you send them an email, they're going to be mad to the sun, right? Yeah. You know, just get talk about it. All the coworkers be flipping out saying, oh yeah, this person, that person, they, they did this and they come to all these assumptions. You can clear up the issue right there in that call and you will not lose your rapport which will damage your relationship right so yeah. full circle back there and the same type of thinking such as uh oh yeah i, I could send it to them because i am afraid that they're going to yell at me or uh, i'm a, I, my fear of confrontation this that the other thing most humans do have fear of confrontation that's a normal thing so don't feel bad if you do but guess what everybody does People have fear of actually denying people too. So the person who you're confronting is also fearing being able to, you know, telling you something that's negative about you. Yeah. It's, a, it's an issue. So you're both scared. Remember that yeah. you're both yeah. scared. 
But I, I'm, the I'm same sure type of psychology is behind it of, you know, talk shit behind someone's back, right? It's the same psychology. Sure, it's not the same thing, but it's the same psychology of they're not here. I have this barrier. They don't know that I'm talking about them, so I'm safe versus say it to my face. It's that same thing. It's primal. Yeah. And I, I've often found, I've had it with customers, right? Cust we, we, salespeople listening will have had customers that have gone quiet on them. And often it's because they don't have the answer. They, they, they feel... Well, I can't tell you what you want to hear. I can't tell. I haven't got any good. I haven't got any news. So it's easy. To, and I, I've, I've had recently some customers come on board and go, do you know what? Due to COVID, we've got to delay our pot. I want to tell you it's bad news due to COVID. And I've thanked them and said, look, thank you for getting on camera and talking me through it and explaining rather than just sending me an email or hiding behind it. I actually, because they were worried about telling me, I was like, I really appreciate the fact you've done that because now I'm not going to pest you. I'm not going to be the salesperson or the team that, calls you 20 times going well, well why aren't you responding or email you know it comes at you from every angle because what have you done wrong why aren't you talking to me because you are communication it, it's key right it's both directions and that's i hope from these customers doing that with us because we've built if not relationship at least enough rapport that they felt it would be wrong not to have that conversation with us you know i took that as a positive of you obviously feel there's enough equity in this relationship or building relationship to not just send me an email. I'm hoping you sent someone else an email telling them not sure about the project yet, but you took the trouble with me to do it personally. And hopefully that, that's us building relationship. And my reaction builds more relationship with you that I don't go, well, no, 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 no. How do we get it done? How do we get it done? No, I appreciate we're in COVID, the impact on your business, you know, it's going to happen. There's uncontrollables going on right now that is not the fault of any individual business. They haven't lied to you. Things are changing on all of us every day that we can't predict. And to your point, everyone's got to be incredibly agile with everything and every engagement they're having because the person at the other end, you do not know their personal circumstances. You don't know their business circumstances right now because the world has just been tipped on its head. Yeah, and that understanding is, is key. The, the communication is key. And when you communicate someone with somebody, that's why, uh, you know, in sales, email selling has plummeted in effectiveness. It's because everybody's emailing each other and it's because there's no human aspect. People are not interacting with other people personally. So then it all becomes a digital thing. It's become franchised. So those emails that you send are not going to catch their attention. If, you, if you're sending automated emails, please stop immediately because honestly, it's pissing me off in my inbox. I block your email address. But Rob, what's gone worse is, and this leads nicely into social selling, right, is this concept that social selling's the new mantra. It was before this. It's been talked about for years, but now suddenly everything's gone digital. So I'll switch to social selling and too many, and it's frightening, the high percentage of people that think social selling is do what you did on email but do it on LinkedIn in mail, right? It's just switch platform, it, but it's the same behavior. The behavior hasn't changed. Why do you think you're going to get different results? That is not social selling. That is not social selling, right? That, that, it, that is doing what you used to do. Social selling is a methodology, not just you've moved platforms. And I'm sure you get them, right? I hope I'm not the only one that gets inundated. Absolutely. So if you're sending LinkedIn messages as if you'd send an email, stop right now. Because if you send someone an email, let's say let's say you send someone a text message and it's structured like an email, they're like, oh, this person's from the last century. Like, what the hell is this? No one's going to answer you. It's weird. It's weird. So, hey, how's it going? Say, introduce yourself. Ask them how they're doing. Ask them how business is. If you just approach with that just glorious five paragraphs of why you should buy a product in a LinkedIn message, I have immediately unconnected uh, uh, disconnected i i have i have uh, i shove your profile into the garbage it, it's what do you do i actually have a set i have a set of responses that i have that are pre-written out all i have to do is just replace the name and it's saying what they did and how wrong it was and what they need to fix it so i give them advice of just like listen you just sent me your entire life story in a linkedin message that number one i will openly admit that I did not read any of it. I'm sending you this message because of what you did. Two, do not sell to me directly on my social media profile because I will block you. And then three, do you even know what I do or who I am? No? 
So all three of those, you're out. You're getting blocked. Yeah. No yeah. to two of those, you're probably not going to get a response. No to one of those, your chances are slim. Yes to all of them, you're in. But think of the problem is it's called social selling. So what does that imply? And I've always had this issue of it should be called using social media platforms to gain engagement at the beginning of a sales cycle. That, that you know, but it doesn't flow, right? Social selling sounds hip and hype, but it's understanding what to do. And, I, and the pattern I see, similar to yourself, is initially you'll get often a LinkedIn connection request and, and they're getting cute because they go, I, Ian, I saw you on this top sales leaders report, or I saw you on the top speakers of this, well done. So, that, so there's some context. Well done, you've got context. Really, really respect um, and would value being a connection to learn from you. So, something that shows actually, and you, you glance at them and go, it's a proper profile. It's not a spammer and all the rest, right? Why wouldn't you let them connect or follow, right? So they've earned that much. Great, fine. But then that because you've said, yes, I've got my first yes, then they hit you with, here's my sales pitch. Here, here, to your point, here's my sales. And then... The follow on to that is often um, uh, you may have missed my last message. Hope you hope you haven't missed it or just in case you intended to reply, but didn't. And it goes on and, and it's how many iterations are you going to get? And I've said to people, whether it's phoning, cold calling, right? Still, still, it's not dead. Should be warm calling. But but whichever way you're using, the minute you've sent one, what do you think happens when you sent the second or you made the second phone call, the third or fourth? You're educating them to spot you even easier, right? Why do you think if they haven't responded to the first bit and haven't seen the value, so you got it wrong in the first place, doing it 10 more times, like tap, 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 they're suddenly gonna go, oh, do you know what? Sorry about what ignoring the first day. I really, really was desperate to speak to you. I'll speak to you now. They've already told you the behavior. Ch then change, but people don't. Trying the same thing over and over again okay. to infinitum, is yep. it's textbook insanity. Stop. I get people trying to sell me social selling, right? And and well, to your point, check me out. I speak on social selling. And the fact you've just tried to sell it to me without realizing that you've not done your homework. So you've just proved you don't understand social selling. What a vicious circle that one is. It's I get it all the time, right? People trying to sell you stuff that if they did their research, they go that you are not a profile customer selling me a CRM system when we are at Natterbox dedicated to the Salesforce ecosystem. We run a whole business on it. We're a reference for them. And that's all we say. You can tell. It's so obvious. You're not going to sell me a competing CRM system. But no, nope, I'm going to get the pitch on you. Here's what we can do with CRM systems. Can you not figure out there's 999 chance that I'm on Salesforce and we're never moving off it because it's our thoroughbred of our business. But you're trying to sell me a competing system. Why are you even bothering? Well, you're wasting your time, not mine. It's quicker for me to delete it than it is for you to send it, right? And, but yeah, it's... Well, d depending, because, you know, I run an artificial intelligence company, automation, right? Except we are anti-automation, the whole company. That's part of our values because people are automating the wrong aspects. There's no such thing as a cookie cutter message or a communication that you could send that is going to work for everybody. Sure. It's a numbers game, but how about you actually communicate with people who people are dying to have communication because of how little communication there's been. Automation is not the answer. It's not the answer because with social selling, you need to communicate and actually say something meaningful to somebody for them to connect with you, to build a rapport and to build a relationship. If you send them that same thing where I can't, I'm impressed by your profile, I'd like to connect. I immediately delete those requests. Stop sending it to me. I know you're a robot. So does everybody else. Don't think that it isn't that. And whatever companies are pushing all that stuff for literally thousands of dollars a month to automate that stuff, stop it. Right? I, I'm sick of it. Just stop buying their product. They are ripping you off because everybody knows you're a robot. When you get those, when you're the one using it, guilty of using it, and you get those, do you know it's a robot? Uh, yeah, you do. Do you say yes? No, you don't. And so all you, get, why would you, use all you gain is a connection, right? That doesn't mean they've invited you to engage with them. It's okay, you've got a connection. The next step is the failure point of now you just go back to your old behaviors, well, which didn't work before and they still won't work. It, it's for me, it's probably, I describe it like when I try and train people on this, it's, it's like go, when, when we lived in the real world that we'll, we'll hopefully get back to is when you go to an event, right? And it's a conference. 
and you get there and you walk up, bump into someone, both getting coffee in the morning, you don't immediately go, ah, hi. Um, so this is what I do, and I'd like to tell you this. What you do is you build. You, you well, uh, how, how did you, you get here this morning? Crikey, that traffic! Oh no, I came on the tube. Really, where from? You have a bit of a conversation. You might go, oh, what, 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 what are you looking forward to today? You might bump into them a bit later, and during the day, through three or four, five, six engagements of bumping into each other at lunch or something, you build an affinity where they might, they'll probably say to you, "What do you do? What do you do?" Who do you work for? What do you do? Tell, tell, tell. Because it feels natural. Electronically, people think they can shortcut that and go straight for, here's my sales pitch. Would you like to buy it? Just because it's faster does not mean it's different or any better. Social selling, like you're saying, and this is this is the part that it blows my mind now. People don't understand this. It's still a communication from one human being to another human being. Why is it any different from what's happening in, I guess you could say, real life? Mm -hmm. If it's digital, it doesn't, there's no difference. It's, it's just talk to somebody as if you talk to them like a real person. That's it. That's all people need for this to be successful. That's all I need when I want to, if I answer you, it was a really good uh, introduction. It was a really good communication that was, that was sent. They started building the rapport and you know, it's, it's worth yeah. my time speaking to them. Uh, what I would recommend is do not pitch until you have the meeting set. People say that meeting settings, the hardest part of sales. That is absolutely a lie. I, for example, I'm not even a salesperson. I have no sales background. I could set a meeting like that. The reason why is because if you want to chat about the nitty gritty details, all I do is get to know somebody a little bit. And then I say, Hey, if you want to talk about collaborating or something like that, let's just meet instead because it's just, you know, the communication's better. It's, um, and, uh, it would be nice to meet you, like actually meet you. Fantastic meeting link. Uh, they send it or you send it, whoever gets to it first. Yeah. It's about 50-50 yeah. for me. And then my my meeting acceptance rate is about 79%. Explain that one. It's because it's approached that way. Yeah. And, my, and one of the things I find that works well as well, uh, uh, which is part of social selling, but is is old school selling, is um, reference, uh, it's reference introductions, right? And that doesn't mean a customer of yours. The beauty of these platforms is you can identify, you have access if you, well, let me introduce you to a, a, a term that I, I'm monikered. I've not had anyone else call it, but it's, it's being Sherlock. So, whenever any of my salespeople talk to me about anything and they mention a name, I'm I'm slowing them down, going, whoa, 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 whoa wait, what, where are they on LinkedIn? I want to I want to I want to see stuff. I just want to know a name and a job title. This is a human being. What can I find out about them? So I want to stop, 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 because salespeople love telling me this. Oh, I've had this great conversation. This is a, that's all great. But stop, stop. I haven't even looked the person up yet. Who are they? And I want to see, well, who are they? Where did they work before? Et cetera, et cetera. And being sure up means, here's the example. Most salespeople think with social selling, getting it wrong, are Lestrade in the Sherlock stories. Lestrade of Scotland Yard. And if you watch Sherlock Holmes, you'll get this quickly. And Lestrade will walk into a crime scene and glance around, see five or six clues, and go right. I know what happened here. This is it. Here's the here's the uh, answer to this murder, this robbery, whatever it is. Done. Sherlock will come in, same room, same opportunity, access to the same stuff, and spot ten things that Lestrade didn't spot, and go totally different conclusion, totally different conclusion. That's what being Sherlock on on, on so, social selling is. It's being able to look, open your eyes, look at profile, and don't just look at the top bit and quickly this open up the, the folds of where they've worked before right look at who do they follow who are they shared connections with with you what do they are they on other platforms so even if they're not linking to their twitter profile i always quickly search other platforms to see because guess what rob maybe I, I look you up on twitter and on twitter you're sharing lots of stuff about something different about your personal interests or whatever and there's something there that i go oh my god Oh my God, there's there's a connection. There's a connection there because you're talking about X, Y, and Z. I, I've got something I can use now as a connection. It's like the old days being in your office and seeing a picture on the back wall of somewhere I recognize. And like, How come you got a picture there on the wall out of interest? Because that's I went to college there. It's that sort of thing. It's finding it, it's you know, it's finding everything I can about you as an individual to know are there any genuine that's the key genuine authentic connection points and often it can be just that i spot 
I've spotted before you worked somewhere before, right? And maybe we don't share a connection, but hang on a minute, you were there at that time. Because often I'm not connected to you at this point. You were there at that time. I, th hang on a minute, I know someone. Oh, I'll go and look them up. You were there at the same time as one of my connections. You're not a shared connection because they might not be linked to you. Doesn't mean they don't know you. Not everyone does everything on LinkedIn. Reach out to them. You, when you were at such and such, you didn't know this guy. God, yeah. Yeah, we used to hang out and, and do volleyball. What? Bang. That's the Sherlock. Lestrade will be. You weren't connected. Didn't bother looking at that. No shared connections. Might not be a shared. A referral introduction has a 40% success rate. Yeah. I've just got That's... one. I've just got one to a very senior guy in a company, to an existing customer. I've got rapport with her. Not a relationship. Don't know her that well. But we've done a good job with her. My team looks after her. I reached her and said, I notice you're connected to do you know him well yeah 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 she did an intro on linkedin a proper intro where you're both on the message i got a reply thanks for the intro yeah yeah can we talk next week this is a senior person that we wouldn't have been able to get to right because he'll block everything because he gets inundated but it's been a personal intro with an endorsement of we've just chosen them you should talk to them at least i've got a call booked with him it's diarized done people don't do it right it's it's but it's it's not rockets none none of social selling is rocket science None of it. None of it's complicated. It's just learning some methodologies and some patterns and, and some new stuff and then doing them consistently. Taking the time to also look that person up just because, oh, they work at a SaaS company. Perfect target. No, not even close. Part of so what I do for a living is that I create artificial intelligence that does all of this work for you. So it tells you, oh, yeah, you have an 87.3 percent probability of having a positive engagement. If anybody tells you, oh, here's a probability that you will sell them, that statistic is impossible and they're lying to you. That's not possible. Someone could have had a yeah. bad day. You, they're not going to buy because they had a bad day. But it's looking at what are their interests? What are their values? What are their skills? How does that align with you? What's your selling style? What's, your, what's that person's buying style? What's the probability of a successful engagement? Not for a sale, but for an engagement. The probability of an opportunity that can come for it, whether it be a partnership or a new networking opportunity, a referral, or so on. Because if people really hit it off with one another, that's ultimately the thing right there, is that if they're not going to buy from you, if they really like you, if you could build a rapport and they really like you, they're going to recommend you to somebody that will buy from you because chances are they know somebody who needs exactly what you have. Chances are, because people know a lot of people. If anything, they'll introduce you to somebody who does know somebody who would need something that you have. And this goes for anybody is that that's the way that it works. An introduction, word of mouth is still the most effective form of advertising and communication and PR, is that if people are saying good things, who are they gonna believe? An ad, a digital ad that they see that's clickbait, or are they gonna believe someone who was their friend or their colleague or yeah. one of their relatives that says, you gotta check this out, this is the best thing in the world, blah, blah, blah about this person, or, oh, this person's fantastic. I met with them, you know, he's such a nice guy. They want to meet with you because guess what? People invest in people, not products or services. So stop trying to sell the products or services. And, and we live in a world, if people don't believe that, think about this. <clears throat> As an individual, have you ever, where you're looking at an app on the phone and you check the reviews, right? They're people you don't even know. I am, or you're going to see a movie and you check IMDb before you watch it. You're trusting reviews of other human beings aggregated together. Oh, but you don't know any of those people. We all do it. We live in a world where you do it on Amazon, right? You buy something. Oh, they've only got a three star rating. Mm, and you start looking at it. The worst is the phones for me because apps are 59 cents, 59p, right? And yet, and I do this in conferences. And I put your hands up. Tell me I'm not the only one that. You look at it and you go, oh, hang on a minute. One star, maybe not. It's 59 cents P, right? It's You're not making a big purchase, but you're still psyched. We're all honed now to take thoughts of recommendation. We, we live by recommendation on these platforms. So if you don't think a human recommendation of someone who actually knows them um, of an introduction counts or anything, you are incredibly naive and missing a trick. And I hope all my competitors do that, but mine don't, because it's it is incredibly valuable and it works. It doesn't the con the introduction isn't always there though. That's the thing to understand. You know, you will often look and find there is no. I, I've often looked at an individual that we want to get in contact with, 
and I've found joint connections to start with or some that maybe worked with them and I've pinged off four or five. Do you know this individual? Could, Bob, Sue, Dave, how are you doing? I'm trying to get, do you know that? How well do you know them? And I get back, oh, I met them at a conference five years, I think five, uh, nah. You can't get an intro if there's no, if they don't have rapport or relationship, right? It's not, being a connection doesn't mean it. So oft, sometimes you'll get that, that none of the people you ask really knows them well enough to leverage an introduction. But at least you tried. If you don't ask, you don't know that. That's the thing. And if you keep asking it, and I do it methodically every time, some of them go, oh, my God, yeah. And it's a gold one. When you get that, yeah, I know. I'll interview I, 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 We go to kids go to the same school. Yes. But if you don't ask at all, you never get you never get the gold the gold gems. The right? worst so, thing the worst thing anybody can ever tell you is no. If they say no, that's the end of that. Exactly. It's not it, you're not. There's no catastrophic thing that happens afterward. The world's not going to end. It's just that they said no, and then guess what? They're going to forget they even told you no in the first place. Forget that but, conversation even happened, even if it was. Yeah, but for me, I feel well at least I've ticked every box of, of trying. So even if I don't get there, boy, if I try, you know, I'm trying everything. I feel proud that I've made the effort. I haven't sat here lazily and just gone, there's a LinkedIn email message. That's right. And moving forward to the next stage, when you're in the meeting, if you know who works at their company, if you know who the roadblocks are going to be, let's say if you're selling something that is an integrated service and you need the dev team to get involved, the dev team is the biggest blocker in that entire thing. Uh, I mean, well, before the CRO usually, but the dev team is going to be a huge blocker. So, Let's say the uh, CTO or the CPO's name is Jim. It's like, well, what can we do? They're excited about the product. You sold them well. You know, you built before everything like that. It's like, well, I understand that you, they know what they're saying. Oh, well, you know, I'll have to check in with the team and then see where this goes. It's like, oh, well, um, what would it need to be, or what's the time frame that it would need to take uh, for Jim to be all right with it? Like, oh, you know, Jim. As soon as that was stated they will now begin to speak to you as if you're internal because you know their team so they're going to start talking to you as if you're on their team that is a big trick that could be used that is extremely effective because you know their team so you know them and you know their company so that means they know you because you know their company right well i think you've demonstrated respect you know i want a customer to think well at least you've taken the effort you've sussed that out you know, I, I remember going into a meeting with, with one of our ICs many years ago in a previous company. And in the meeting, started the meeting, I haven't met the guys before, and started off with, so <clears throat> great to meet you two guys. Um, so which one of you two keeps following each other then? They were like, what? I said, well, you t you've worked at that, you, you've worked about four companies in the same companies together, and who gets there first? And we had a joke about it. They went, boy, that's yeah and it ended up being a conversation about it they were joking and to your point i was then part of the joke with them right i'd instigated it because i figured out they obviously know each other really well so i triggered it afterwards the se said never seen that done before oh my god such a small thing but i'd spotted by looking at both profiles hang on a minute and you have to look right that isn't something that's going to alert to you linkedin isn't going to tell you that here's two individuals that if you look back in their history, they haven't every company, but they've worked together in three or four companies together at different periods over the last 15 years. That's a conversation point with both of yes, them. Yes, it is. And they know it. They don't, they, they're not going to go, did we? And it straight away had rapport with them, right? Because we had a joke about that at the beginning, et cetera. And it was like, oh my God. And I'd done my homework. I'd made an effort to know about them as an individual and just by asking, the, I didn't say, by the way, I've checked you out on LinkedIn. I've read everything and I know, duh, 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 duh. <clears throat> but I want you to know I do care about you as an individual because that's who I'm dealing with. And I've taken the trouble and my time to do that. Right? And there's nothing wrong with that because it's published information. They put it on the Internet. People say to me, oh, yeah, but I don't like doing that because it's, it feels like I'm stalking or being a bit spying. Right. You haven't hacked into their personal accounts. They've published anything they publish on the Internet. They put out there knowing the world can see it. Now, don't start talking about their kids on the first conversation that you've stalked them on Facebook. Be appropriate. But there's nothing wrong with anything you can see on the Internet, which is open 
it's fair game to look at and research, right? You could ask me a question about anything on my profile and I cannot feel offended at it because I'd put it there. Right, right. You don't want to get into conclusions such as like, oh yeah, um, what we'd like to say is you went to the Miami Heat game every Wednesday. Uh, you know, how was that last game that you went to? You know, you're getting into the creepy zone. They don't yeah, know you. Exactly. Why do you even know that about them? So uh, my, my, my word to go by with, it's just a personal thing, is that if they have social media and you're checking out their social media and they use it for strictly personal reasons, do not bring up any of the stuff that they post yeah. on there because you're not I their agree. friend. You're not connected with them. If they weren't smart enough to make it a private profile, just don't bring it up because it is too invasive. Yeah. Use it to your advantage, but most people will subconsciously you just subconsciously immediately just go to that whether you want to or not that's where it's going to go because you're going to try to leverage what you can but that's that's the biggest thing is do not get too personal with the first engagement because you know you're not gonna walk so up to someone on the street like hey you get home at eight o'clock every night that's really awesome what are you doing after eight uh you'd call the police right after yeah. that that's that that person has been stalking you and so I, and I, agree. And I think to that point it's appropriate after a meeting to say um, great to meet you today. Send them a LinkedIn in connection invite. Great to meet you today. You know, love to be, be a value connection, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. But don't do it on their personal Facebook account. Right? It, it's got a different connotation with it. You can follow them on Twitter if you've had that and you've seen some content. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You're following them. But then don't go in and like every tweet they've ever sent about everything including the personal stuff. But if they've shared something about, and you're talking about technology, digital transformation article, you could absolutely like that. It's relevant to what you do. So it's not intrusive. It's, it, but if they're sharing stuff about, I don't know, their, their local football team and stuff, don't go liking that. Because why are you liking that? You're only liking it for a convolute reason to make them like the fact you like it. And it's going to go the other way because it's not appropriate for you to like that. So it's just doing sensible stuff, right? It's, not, it's yep. not, again, not rocket science. Just think about what you're doing. My dad always taught me growing up, common sense is the least common commodity. So fucking have it. Since like six years old, that was said to me. And guess what? It worked. You know, it, most people don't. It, it's the least common or the rarest commodity out there is that th think of others. Would you want to be treated that way? It goes back to the golden rule. The things you learned in kindergarten, in first grade, you know, it, just primary schools. Treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Would you want someone looking at all of your stuff and then telling you, hey, how's your personal life going with yeah. it you've never met before? Hell no, you wouldn't. So why would you do that to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the, 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 the other thing it leads to is, I guess, the, the other topic I talk about is personal branding is on the basis of you're going to look at them, be aware they may, you know, reciprocate. They may look back, which isn't a bad thing. I like it when I see someone's look back because they've taken the issue. They've spotted that I've perhaps viewed their profile or like something or commented on, the, on a post that's relevant, authentic, and they've looked back. Well, you want them to look back and see something that represents you in the manner that is appropriate to what you do. And the reason I say it in that way is, you know, have your right photo and whatever, et cetera. So don't... It is nothing. You could be dressed as a clown, right? You could be dressed as a clown on there, and it's authentic. If you're a children's entertainer, then that's appropriate. If you're an artist, you could be. But if you're selling corporate software, don't be dressed as a clown on there. Don't be a picture at a wedding drunk, because it's not appropriate to how the perception they they should be coming back to you of. It's your personal brand you are affecting, and it should be relevant. If it's on, if you. Nothing wrong with posting personal photos, right, of having fun and whatever. But think, if they can get to them, to your point of permissions, if they can see them, they can see them. Right? And you cannot then blame them for taking a first impression of you by going, well, I, I, you know, I didn't like the look of it. And people buy from people. You, you alluded to that. And people also make very quick, unfair sometimes impressions, first impressions, right? You, you make micro decisions of... Someone comes in a room, and um, in fact, my wife said this to me the other day, is, isn't it funny? She was just thinking about something. She said, there was someone came into something she bumped into. She said, and, and I don't know, that was it. We, we were seeing some, uh, some realtors, estate agents from my father's property. And one guy, great. I didn't meet the, the second one that came in, but the second one, apparently, she, I took an immediate dislike to her. 
just her demeanor and approach. It was she was critical. She, whereas the first guy was great. Just told you know you, you felt you could trust that individual, and they had your best interests at heart. And there was a conversation. We were working together. The second one, you felt they're out for their own gain here, right? She said, "I'm," but I felt it within literally it, a minute. I'd already made. Oh, I didn't want to deal with this person. You, within within the first thirty seconds of meeting somebody, that's, that's, you, you, those conclusions have already been made. Like you know, if you see someone walk into a restaurant without shoes on and no socks, they're barefoot walking into a restaurant. You immediately are just like, "Oh no." But you've never met them. They could be the sweetest, most generous exactly. person in the world. Exactly. But we all, we're, that's the way the human psyche works, right? And and you can't, I say to people, don't, you, you can't argue with it because we all do it. We don't do it consciously of trying to turn against me. So digital first impressions count because more often today in the world we're in, we're doing these camera things. And here's the thing to think about that's different. When I jump on a camera with you, let's say you're a prospective customer or you're a candidate I'm interviewing or we're doing this today, Rob. It's so easy. You don't know. Right now I'm looking at the camera. I can look here. I can look at screens. But I can I could quite easily do this right and be talking to you and be pulling up your LinkedIn profile. You can't see my hand. You can't see that I'm looking, glancing down and pulling up and I can be checking you out. So where before people may not have taken the effort, it's there isn't an effort today because five minutes before they jump on a call with you, they're at the keyboard. While they're on the call with you, they're at the keyboard. You, it's so easy. You can be checking people out while you're talking to them. There's four of you on the meeting. Where's Dave? Who's this Dave? I haven't seen him before. I've just, you'll be checking him out. So assume people are going to check you out. What are they going to find? Google yourself. That's number one, because that'll find stuff that you maybe didn't expect that would come up. And check your profiles. You know, check how they look, check what they say. Are they up to date? And what do they make you look like? Do they make you look like a robot or do they make you look like a friendly human who is worth engaging with and looks professional and trustworthy? And yeah, I, I think now they're going to make a judgment when they talk to you. Right. So if you do a good profile, but then you're an absolute worst person to deal with, they're going to suss it out still. It doesn't it doesn't change who you are. But it can change their first impression. And the stats, I don't know what they are, but the stats around as well to your point you made earlier, where how much does it change? How, how much effort does it take to change your first impression, get it back off track? That first piece. So, for example, my wife's example, it would take an awful lot for them to get back on track. They could, but it isn't just going to be one phone call. It's going to be a, a period of behaviors that say that first impression, actually, this lot outweighs it. But it isn't an equal period. One minute a bad impression, it isn't one minute a good to equal it. It can be, I think it's eight to ten times as much effort to weigh it. So why, why not make a first, good first impression in the first place and take your own barrier out of the way? The, social media is designed in a way where how people have consumed it, it's what it's become. How you display yourself digitally is how you want the world to see you. That's what it's for. That's why, you know, people go, oh, that person's so fake or, oh, I want to be that person. You know how influencers work. 80% of the time, it's the 80-20 rule, same thing. 80% of the time, it's how you want the world to see you. 20% of the time, it's the real you. Yes, it is fake, but it's how the world is supposed to perceive of you. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with that first impression because that's what builds it. I mean, for example... Before I have a call with someone, before I even agree to meet with somebody, I've already looked at their LinkedIn. If I won't even meet with you if you if you have no social media presence or no digital presence presence whatsoever, I'm probably not going to agree to meet with you because it seems sketchy. You could be a fake account, you could be someone mm -hmm. trying to scam me or something like that. So it's very important to have that. And uh, I do want to make a point to you for all of those people out there. Maybe you had a criminal record in the back, it, you know, in your past. If you do have a mugshot out there, there are services out there to get it removed. Get it removed. It's not that expensive. Do it because people will only judge you for that thing. And that is one of the first things because they're so damn good at SEO that will pop up on a Google image search of that person. So just be careful and take yeah. care of your digital aspects. But um, anyway, moving forward, we're almost out of time here. Uh, I do want you to mention that website that you introduced me to about profile pictures where you could post it up and they could judge it and everything. If you can get into that a little bit, I think that'd be a great yeah. way to end it. Yeah. It's awesome. So, so it, it, for me, when I advise people on social selling, personal branding, all this stuff, right, it's lots of, <clears throat> I 
I don't like going to conferences and things where here's some here's something you're going to learn, but it's huge and expensive. So to take it on, you've got to invest. You, it's all or nothing. I like lots of, of actionable insights where that's small. I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And, and I could do bite sized chunks. So the photo one, and I came across this by accident, was how do you choose what profile picture to use? Well, what we most most of us do is we take a look at the photos of had or oh, I think I look good in that one. Number one, or I've ch family, friends at, at most, the closest to you. Which one? They've all got a natural bias because they know you, and and they they're not looking at it as what the way that someone first would look at it and make a first impression. It's not their first impression. So I used a, I used a picture years ago and well, I thought it was good and whatever. But then I found this site called photofeeler.com. And I came across it by accident and thought it allows you to test your photo with independent audience. So I put the photo I was using in and it came back. It wasn't bad, bad. I wasn't totally untrustworthy. Oh, my God, I hate this person. But it came back not how I'd like it to. It wasn't the shiny, shiny star, right, of really, really great first impression. So I tested it with a different photo I had, much better results. So I changed it to that. A little bit later, I did a test with, for me, same picture, glasses on, glasses off. It was the same picture. They, uh, you know, they had a photographer do it for work, and you just take a variety of pictures. The glasses on one got me much better results. There was nothing else in the picture, the background, right? So that doesn't mean if you take a picture with glasses on, it means for me, in that time, at that profile picture, that one had more impact. But the only reason I knew that is because I tested it on this site. Now the site lets you do it. You can either pay for some credits or all you do is you go on there while you're watching TV and just vote on other people's pictures. So you contribute and it builds you up some credits. I think the minimum is you do 40 votes on pictures. So it's a second or two each, right? It's a great couple of minutes. You've got 40 credits. You've now got 40 votes for your own picture. So the bigger sample you want, you just vote on other people's and you can get totally free testing. Yeah, it works like a community. It's really yeah. awesome. Uh, they have AI mixed in there too, so the junk votes you actually get sorted out. It's pretty cool. I mean, I did it for myself, which is why I recently changed my profile picture. <laughs> but I need to change it again because guess what? I need to be smiling in the one that I put because it put me way high for influential. So it's almost a perfect score for you know influential. But then again, yeah. likability was extremely low. And it's usually when you look influential, you're not very likable is the thing. So finding that perfect mix is extremely hard. I mean, you can have it, you can have your cake, but you can't eat it too. It needs to be a mix between it. So you can get a nice balanced thing going on there. So you can have half a cake and you can eat half a cake, that type of a thing. So there, there is no perfect score there and people are very judgmental, but that you have, that's what you have to understand is that people are very judgmental. Yeah. And we so, work on it. That's right. We're, 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 if you a picture paints a thousand words, why does that phrase exist? Because we generally go on what we see. Our brain processes it quicker than what we read. So you look at the picture and, and go, yeah, no, you make a judgment. Whether you like it or not, it's, it's what happens. It would take an incredible amount of self-awareness to not do that. Except you still will. You'll just be conscious of it. That's the difference. Yeah. yeah. That's it. But yeah, anyway, Ian... Thank you so much for everything. Absolutely fantastic. I had a great time oh. and um, would be more than happy to have you on any time that you'd like. So I uh, hope that there's more of this in the future. That'd be fantastic. Anyway, thank you everybody who's listening. Uh, this is Down the Rabbit Hole Podcast with your host, Rob Turley, co-founder, co-CEO of White Rabbit Intel. Hope you enjoyed it. There was a lot of insight here. It could probably help a lot of people. Anyway, if you'd like to follow this, it's hashtag DTRH podcast, hashtag follow the white rabbit. Please follow. If you don't, totally fine. You won't hurt my feelings. I don't really care. Do whatever you want. And um, uh, visit us on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're literally on everything, even Deezer. And who the hell uses Deezer anyway? I mean, really. So if, if you look it up, you'll find us on anything, no matter what the platform it is that you use. Um, have a good night and enjoy. If you enjoyed this episode, follow Down the Rabbit Hole Podcast for new episodes weekly on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, and YouTube. If you'd like to apply to be featured on the podcast or recommend a featured guest, please feel free to email us at the team at whiterabbitintel.com.